coming up next on NMZ Live TV. Shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. And then you shall have good success. Up next on NMZ Live TV. In Psalm 150, the psalmist ends with a sound of praise. And he says, praise ye the Lord. And then he tells us that we can praise God with the various instruments. But I like what he, how he ends that psalm. And he says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. And today we praise God that you have chosen to worship with us. You have chosen to be here with us at New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church as we worship, as we praise, and as we lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. The New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church is located on Blue Hill Road, just south of Cowpen Road on the beautiful island of New Providence in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Our senior pastor is Pastor Alfred Stewart, and I am Pastor Theophilus Claridge, pastor of the children's ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. There are those of you who are worshiping with us. You might be a member, you might be a follower, or you may just be viewing our broadcast. And you may want to give to the ministry of the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Here's how you can reach out to us. You may call us at the following number, one, Two four two three four one one eight zero four. That's one two four two three four one eighteen zero four. You may also WhatsApp us at the following number one two four two three four one three seven two six. That's one two four two three four one thirty seven twenty six. You may also email us at new.mount.zion at gmail.com. That's new.mount.zion at gmail.com. And we invite you to like and follow us on our Facebook and Instagram pages. And we say subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if the messages that you have seen and the content, the music ministry that you have witnessed on this program or any of our programs has been a blessing to you. We invite you to please share it with your family and friends. Use simply using the handle backslash the new Mount Zion. Backslash the new Mount Zion. Here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church for the past nine weeks now, we have been in our 2022 Small Group Spiritual Growth Campaign. And this campaign is based on the Believer's Authority by Kenneth Hagan. Each week, the various pastors here at New Mount Zion would pre preach messages from the series. And each Wednesday night in our Bible study time, we go over the various lessons. Today, the message is entitled, It is Written. I'm privileged to say that I'm the speaker for today's message. As we prepare to hear the message, It is Written, listen to the music ministry of Kanisha Hamilton as she ministers in song.
serve a God that is supreme. He is sovereign. There is no God like the God we serve. Where you are, can you just lift your hands as we continue in worship? Father, you are so sovereign. You're bigger than any problem that I could ever face. There's nobody like you, God. So we lift our hands to give you praise right there. Can ever ask or think or be mad. 
mountain. You are God, the sovereign God. You reign supreme. You rule supreme. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you the praise. Sorry, to exercise, the key to exercising our authority is the Word of God. We saw that in the second verse of the fourth chapter of Paul's second letter, letter to his son in the Gospel, Timothy, we are commanded to constantly preach the Word. We are the preach the word, Paul tells us, whether it is in season, that means whether the circumstances are friendly or safe. And we are also to preach the word out of season. And those are times when it is not convenient to preach the word. Those may be times when it may be awkward or difficult, or there may be resistance, and he says whether it's in season or out of season, we are to preach the word. And the apostle goes on to tell us that it is the word of God that provides correction to those in error. It is the word of God that speaks out against wrong, or it scolds, or it disciplines, or it chides, or it corrects. It is the word of God that uplifts or exhausts, exhorts. We also learn that it is the word of God that we are to use when we are confronting and we have been confronted by the devil. In the fourth chapters of the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, as well as in the 12th and 13th verse of the first chapter of Mark, we read about the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness by Satan. 
Now, each of the synoptic gospels, as Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they say, they tell us that Jesus being baptized by John, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and that he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. While in the wilderness, he was tempted, or as some modern translations may read, he was tested by the devil. When we read Jesus' response to the attacks by Satan, we realize that he, Jesus, gave us the key to mastering the attacks of the devil and of demons. And he says the victory comes, he shows us the victory comes when we do what he did. We also need to be reminded that because Jesus defeated Satan in the wilderness, when we read through the Gospels, we see that even demons recognized the authority of Jesus. Today, as we look at Luke's account of the temptation, I want us to understand and I want to reiterate the fact that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. This is important because a lot of times we blame things and we blame circumstances on the devil when it is our doing. Or sometimes we blame it on Satan when God is leading us that way to teach us a lesson. And so it's important that we grasp that. He was led by the Spirit. And we saw in chapter 3 of Luke, also in chapter 3 of Matthew, that when Jesus was baptized, it says the heavens opened and the Spirit descended on Jesus. The New King James says, in the bodily shape like a dove. And God the Father declared, this is my beloved Son. In him am I well pleased. I also want us to notice, and I think so often we, we have heard this story, we have read these passages that we don't take time to really read what is being said. If we notice in verse 2, I want us to notice something there. We know about the 40 days of fasting. But we must understand that the temptation is so often we believe in growing up. The temptation did not take place at the end of the 40 days. It took place while he was fasting. Listen to the verse. It says, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards when they had ended, he was hungry. Notice, while he was doing what God wanted him to do, while he was doing and communing with his father, while he was spending time to strip away all the earthly vestiges, Satan stepped in. And we got to grasp that. It's in the middle of the time when we are doing what God has called us that the devil tries to get us to stumble and to fall. It is in the middle of our praise and worship when the devil will slip something in and distract us. You see, Satan knows what it is that's going to trip us up. He knows what it is that's going to get us to, to blow a stack. And sometimes in the middle of the praise and worship, he's going to get us off track. So we got to be careful for that. And when we get to verse 3 to verse 13, we go into detail of the testing and Jesus' response to the testing. 
And today we want to look at Jesus' response and how we too should respond. The first way we see in our text that Satan tempted Jesus, came after Jesus, was physically. And this is the, also one of the ways he is going to try to come after us. You see, knowing that Jesus was hungry, and we know how it is, New Mount Zion, when we're on a fast. We know what it is. And we know what it is when we're on a fast and you're taking certain medications, and the medications, big and bold, to say, take with food. And you're scratching your head. And you're trying to figure out, and you, you know, some of us just read the, 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 the instructions over and over and over. And then you have to be careful if you're taking um, juices because, and, and, and even fruits, because certain med medications say, do not take with citrus fruits or citrus drinks. And you're trying to figure this out in the middle of this. This is the fast going on now. You see, Satan is going to come after us. And knowing that Jesus was hungry, Satan tried to get Jesus to obey him by making bread from stones to eat. Think about that. You see, Satan wanted Jesus to obey him. It wasn't that Jesus now, you, um, why don't you just eat? Uh -uh. I want you to obey me. If you eat, if you do what I say, if you do what I want you to do, I know I got you. And you see, sometimes we have to be, we have to understand that it may not be physical food sometimes that we may be hungry for. Some of us may be hungry for physical attraction or attention. And we will do whatever we want to get that attraction or that attention. Some of us might be hungry for wealth or financial gain. And sometimes we will do whatever it takes. And you know the saying today, the end justifies the means. And so we're going to try whatever it takes. Well, the Lord can understand, you know. He know, um, I, they ain't paying me enough, so I'm going to take a couple of dollars. And next thing you know, the couple of dollars get to hundreds, get to thousands. And in some businesses, you hear about the people, they get to millions. You see, we want something so bad that we will listen to the voice of Satan and go after it. We seek pleasure so much that we will forget God and we will say, oh, the pleasures of this world look so good. You know, like the prodigal son, we won't go out there because it's enticing to the eyes. And there's an emptiness that is deep within us. And Satan knows that. And he comes after to lure us to seek pleasure or to satisfy the hunger for the things of the world. Or as the Apostle John states in his first epistle, the lust of the world. We go after the world. But however, I want us to notice Jesus' response, when Satan came, Jesus didn't just say, oh, Satan, man, you, you, I'm fooling with you today. Satan respond, Jesus already responded by quoting the word. And some of us don't know the word. See, when Satan comes and we fall, it's because some of us, one, don't know the word, two, some of us don't obey the word. We don't apply the word to our hearts. 
Notice Jesus' words, it is written. And that's important. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And in that part, he is quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 8 in verse 3. And here's what it reads. Remember, in Deuteronomy 8, Moses is speaking on behalf of God to the children of Israel. And as he is speaking to the children of Israel, he is reminding them of certain rules, certain regulations. And telling them how when they get into the land, they are to live. And he is rehearsing in their heads, in this eighth chapter, what they have gone through. How when God led them out of Egypt, and how God fed them these 40 years. And in verse 3, he says, so he humbled you, allowing you to hunger and feed you with manna which you did not know or did not your fathers know that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. You see, it's important that we understand that. It's important if we're going to be victorious in the Christian life. It's important if we're going to stand up and sing, we have the victory over sickness. We have the victory over melting illness. We have the, sick, the, 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 the victory over marital issues. We have to know it's God's word that we have to stand on. The second way Satan came, you notice it didn't say Satan stopped anything. Satan couldn't stop. Satan decided, man, I got to try something, and Satan will come after us every time. If you look back in your life, when there was an area that you were struggling with, and you finally had the victory after prayer, fasting, meditating on God's word, applying God's word to your heart, what does Satan do? He can come back with another angle, at another angle. You see, he's want to try to get you to trip, to trip you up. That's his goal. What did Jesus say? To kill, steal, and destroy. That's the goal of the enemy coming after you. And so, there's one time it's going to happen, and you know, we have victory. We praise God. Satan can try, okay, now, what else he to struggle with? What else is there as an issue we could trip him up with? And he will try because he came to Jesus a second time. And this is what it's showing us for a second time. And when he came back, we got to remember also, you see, this is during the 40 days that Satan is attacking him. And so Satan decides, well, let's try another tactic. Satan says, let's see if we could shortcut God's plan of salvation. I know Jesus came here to receive honor, glory, and power. I know that's what he came for. So Satan says, you know, Jesus, now, you know, you don't have to go through what, all of that. You know, why not skip the cross? I could get you to the point where men will worship you right now. He says, I can make you king of the world. You can become large and in charge without having to do it God's way. And how many times does Satan throw that at us? What you being honest for, man? You know, our musicians, man, why are you want singing in the church? You could go out there and think about the millions you're going to make. Think about it. You waking well? Man, if you go over here, well, there you go. But you know that over there is not where God wants you, or over there 
you have to compromise some things. On the job, they're going to say, well, so what? Because, yeah, I know you're a Christian, you go to church. But, you know, the guest is require this, this, and this, and, you know, you got to go with the flow. You see, that's how Satan tries to get us. You won't get this promotion. So this is what you have to do. See, that's how Satan entices us. I'm going to give you the glory, the honor that you want now. Men going to bow down to you. And they will worship you. But you got to first worship me. You see, if Jesus had given in, Satan knew then that, yes, Adam gave to Satan all of that authority, the legal authority, not the moral authority. Adam gave Satan the legal authority when he gave in. But Satan saying to Jesus, yeah, I get the legal authority. I could give it to, to you, you know. And he says that to us a lot of times. And when he went there, he tried to give false authority, false security, false glory. And if we are not careful, we will fall for it. But notice for a second time how Jesus responded. The first thing Jesus did is he says, get behind me, Satan. But he didn't stop there. Again, he went back and he quoted the word. He says, it is written. You shall worship the Lord your God and him you shall serve. Again, he went back to Deuteronomy. This time in chapter 6. And when he went back to Deuteronomy 6, verse 13 and 14. It reads, again, Moses speaking to the children of Israel, preparing them to go into the promised land. It says, you shall fear the Lord your God and serve him. You shall take oath in his name. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples who are all around you. Jesus summarized it. Simple. Worship the Lord your God. And him only will you serve. You see, this is when we allow the word now to seep into us. When we meditate on God's word, when we spend time in God's word, when we allow it to ruminate within our souls, when we memorize God's word, because it is God's word that we need to throw back when Satan comes. We don't have to look at trying to think through if we keep God's word in our hearts. The psalmist says, Thy word have I hidden my heart that I might not sin against you. See, we got to keep God's word. We got to meditate. We have to spend time. Messages are good. Listening to preachers are good. But we have to spend our own time in the Word. We have to spend our own time studying the Word. If we're going to have victory, it is by the Word. And living according to the Word. We know Satan didn't give up. Satan made a decision. Well... Let's try another angle. I can't get you to look and to bow down and to worship me. Um, I can't get you to do what I want you to do. So in verse 9, for the third time, Satan comes at Jesus. And for this time, Satan is going to cut to the chase, and this is what we have to be careful of. You see, he decided, okay, Jesus, you use Scripture. Well, I can use Scripture too. And we have to be careful, though, when Satan uses the Word of God. 
Because when we look at it, Satan misquoted the passage from Psalm 91. He added something in there. He connected something that should not have been there, and he made it read what it should not read. You see, when Satan came after it, I want us to notice what he does, and he does the same thing to us today. You know, ladies have heard this line, and this is usually by family. You 30-something now, and you ain't get no child yet? You going back to God the way you come? Child, the Lord, ain't got, the Lord, can, the Lord don't have no problem with you, and they try to use... You notice this one, and you go back, and they go back to the Old Testament when the person sinned, and they try to use those. See, God let um, 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 Abram sleep with, 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 with Sarai's handmaid. See, I ain't got to worry about that. And see, God, that's how we try to use it. You see, you got to be careful when people come with the Word of God. We, gotta, we have to, you ourselves, go back to the Word and check it out. God, is this what you say? And is this what your Word says? Or this what this individual say your Word say? Here's what Satan did. Verse 9 says, Then he brought him to Jerusalem set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, notice again what he starts with, if you are the Son of God, if you are a Christian, if you say you believe in God, what did he say to A, Eve? Did God really say you see, he's going to use the word now to cast doubt. Then he goes on and he takes two parts of Psalm 91 and twists it like it reads as one. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. It does say that. But he puts, and, and be careful of those conjunctions sometimes that Satan puts in. And in their hands, he's tying it back to the angels, shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. But notice what the psalmist says in verse 11, 12 of Psalm 91. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, full stop. Then he goes on to verse 12. In their hands. He didn't say, and in their hands. You see, Satan implied that if you throw yourself down, the angels have us obligated to come and take care of you because you say you're the son of God. And verse 12 says, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And the person can come even quote scripture accurately, and you have to be careful to see what is their interpretation of the Scripture. You see, we must be wary of Satan's schemes in trying to get us to obey him by misquoting Scripture. Remember when the scribes and the Pharisees came to Jesus on the question of divorce? And, you know, they start out, you know, is it legal for a man to divorce his wife? Before Jesus could answer, they said, now make sure we can let you know where we're coming from. You know, because why did Moses give permission? And Jesus had to go back and Jesus had to tell them and break down the scripture. And again to Satan, Jesus responded for a third time. He didn't let Satan wear him out. For a third time, he responded by saying, It is 
written. And this time he quotes from verse 16 of Deuteronomy chapter 6. Whereas in our text it says, it has been said, or it is written according to King James, you shall not tempt the Lord your God in Deuteronomy 6 verse 16. It says, you shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. The, he reminded the children of Israel, Moses reminded the children, when you were back there, you tempted God and caused God to do some things. Don't tempt him. And the same thing we have to remind Satan. Satan, this is what God's word had to say. I am living by God's word. You see, too often this stays on a shelf. And we pull it out on Sunday morning. Many of us, and today, Pastor mentioned it last week, when we look at what we have today, many of us don't have to walk around with the big Bible, you know, we have the Bible online. And if your phone turns into a bubble, or you could also Go and there's an offline Bible that you can have on your phone so you can read if you need to. You see, we have to spend time cultivating a relationship with God. You know, many times I remember going into the barber shop and just listening. And fellas, you know, when you go into the barber shop and before all of these restrictions came down, you know, everybody in there, and if it's, you know, football season or basketball season, everybody know everything about every player. They could quote those stats like crazy. And the argument is be, who is the better? And they start going way back quoting these stats. But it's interesting. Do we who name the name of Christ, can we quote the scripture like that? You see, Jesus defeated Satan. Jesus got the victory because he knew the word. He applied the word to his life. When Jesus was about to leave and he was and his disciples in the upper room, and you know, John has the longest discourse about the time in the upper room. And in chapter 15 of John's gospel, Jesus speaking to his disciples and giving them the key. He's giving them the way in which they can have victory. He says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you desire, and it shall be done. I remember years ago, a preacher quoting a passage, and I had to go and look it up. And this is from Psalm 138, verse 2. God said something through the psalmist. The psalmist starts out, he says, I will worship toward the holy temple and praise the name of thy God for thy loving kindness and for thy truth, for thou hast magnified thy name above all thy name. And when that hit me, as the Almighty God says what he says, he holds higher than his name, and we know his name is holy. We bow before the name of Jesus. We worship him. But he says, I will magnify my word. What he says to us, and we must come to the place where we begin to live according to God's word. 
Not what we think. Not what sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so or pastor so-and-so or apostle so-and-so or bishop so-and-so say. It is the word of God that we must live by. You see, Jesus constantly reminded Satan, it is written in that first time, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. We want victory in our lives. We want victory in our homes. We want victory on our jobs. We want victory and we want success. It's God's word. When God called Joshua to lead the children of Israel, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night. And then you shall have good success. You see, my brothers and sisters, the key to mastering Satan is abiding in the vine, which is Christ, and obeying his word, living according to his words. When we abide in Christ, it means that we have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. We have accepted the fact that Jesus died to pay the price for our sins. We have accepted the fact that he not only died on a cruel cross, but he was buried. And three days later, he rose again. And now he is seated at the right hand when he ascended to the Father. And he says today, all power, all authority is given unto me. And that is what we have to stand on. We want victory. Let's start abiding in the word of God. Let's start living according to the word of God. There may be someone in here today. You have never come to that place where you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. You see, the first step of abiding is that you have to become a Christian. You have to come to that place in your life where you acknowledge that you're a sinner and that the only way that you can get into God's good heaven is by accepting the fact that Jesus died for your sins. The Apostle Paul he says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and with the tongue, confession is made. If there's anyone here today who has never come to that place, the altar is open for you today. There may also be someone here who, watching on whatever social media page, you may be watching on WhatsApp, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, the invitation is to you also. And if you have never accepted Jesus with all heads bowed and all eyes closed in the auditorium, I just want you to raise your hand if there's anyone in here who has never come to that place where you have accepted We thank God that everyone in here has indicated that they are born-again believers. But those watching also, the invitation is you and we will pray and I ask that you just pray with me, Lord Jesus, I realize that I'm a sinner. There's nothing that I can do to get me into heaven except trusting your work on the cross. And so today I confess with my mouth that Jesus died for my sins, that he rose to pay the price for my sin. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. 
And so I accept your free gift of salvation today. We bless you and we praise you. If you did that, well, those of you watching, there's a number that will be scrolling on the bottom of the screen. We ask that you just call that number so we can know. And we can reach out and we can help you on your way towards living a victorious Christian life. There may be those of you in here, you are a Christian, but you're not really, truly abiding. Yes, you made the decision, but you're not allowing God's word to permeate your heart. You're not meditating on it day and night. And you're trying to live a Christian life on your own. And you're getting knocked down left, right, and center by the enemy. If you're here, again, with all eyes closed, heads bowed, we just ask that you raise your hand so that we can pray for you. We see you, my brother. And Father, right now, for those who, whether they're in this auditorium or those who are viewing, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would minister them as they struggle, Lord, to live a life that's pleasing to you. And Father, we ask that you would give them godly wisdom that can only come from studying your word. We say, Holy Spirit, even now, minister to them. Show them the areas that they need to spend time with you. We bless you today, Father. We praise you and we magnify your name. And Father, we thank you for your word that you said that you will honor above your name. We bless you today in Jesus' name. Amen. It has been a privilege and a pleasure to have served as your host for today. We know that there were many other programs you could have been watching, and we thank you that you have chosen to be with us here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. And as you leave, we say may God's richest blessings be with you. May his peace always surround you. And may his love always flow over you. In Jesus' name, I am Pastor Theophilus Claridge, pastor of the children's ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. <laughs>